what we like, yeah Get up, you don't wanna miss us And the mix is official It's official. Big facts, no cap, where you at? Yeah. It's time to kick back Welcome to The Mix, y'all. We've got a great show for you tonight. Rising R&B star MKXYZ will be getting into the mix with us very soon. But first, I got to check in with my co-host. How are y'all feeling tonight? Ah, hey, we great. Great. Hey. Great. Hey. You know what I'm saying? We got that coordination. We got that red and blue going through. We looking yeah. good. What? Great Let minds think alike. All right, y'all, we have a lot to talk about, so let's just get right into it. The BET Award nominations have been announced, and Megan Thee Stallion and Baby lead the pack with seven nominations each. Congratulations. So what do you guys think of the nominations this year? I know y'all checked them out. I was very excited about the nominations this year. Um, I feel like there were a couple of people, I'm not going to name any names, that I felt like didn't belong, but... I felt like uh, most of the people were deserving of, you know, their place. Can you please tell us the ones that you don't feel like uh, didn't belong? Because I got to hear that. I'm yeah, gonna, off, offline because y'all don't want me to get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed like in the group category, there were a lot of just like collaborations. Like you had the Migos, Chloe and Hallie, and then like Chris Brown and Young Thug. And I was like, yeah, I didn't a group. It's I more forgot. like they collabed on a project. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. I saw that one, Jamie. I a separate I like, award for collaboration. So that's why I was confused. Hey, Jamie, let me tell you something. BT going to do what BT want to do, okay? Really? Yeah. <laughs> <I think so. laughs> BT yeah. been my family for 20 plus years. And that's what I think always made them stand out, though. They, they try to mix things up, you know? True. But I'm, I'm happy with the baby and Meg the Stallion getting their roses because I really do think like mm -hmm. they... They are like the artists who kind of ran this year. There's a lot of more artists too we could throw in there, but the baby and Meg definitely they deserve that uh, acknowledgement. Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. I think it's clear that it's going to be it's the baby's year, and I know Jazz have because that's her man. That's the one she want to have kids with. You know what I'm saying? So it's the baby is definitely going to take a lot of trophies home that night. But uh, I gotta I gotta rub something in. And, and uh, Zanik's face, just just a little bit. Did you see that the R and B category who they did not include? Well, you know, because it's BT, you know, they just they just want to be wise with their selections because they, they don't do what they're gonna do. They okay. don't want to make people like you upset, you know. <laughs> okay, right. Because Justin Bieber was not included. Just for everybody out there, that everybody that say he's R and B, he was not included in that hey, R and B list. Just Tom, saying. we gonna we have to chill with the Justin Bieber slander. Please, it's like eight please. episodes in. Romeo, man. I about, Romeo, I was just about to say that I'm so tired of talking about if Justin Bieber belongs in the the R and B category. I'm over hey, it. Right. Let that I, I, listen, I love Justin Bieber. He's dope. I just don't consider him an R and B artist, but he's his music is fire. I love to take that jab every time you can. Right. No. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know. let Jazz talk, Jazz. What you trying to say? <laughs> I was just going to say, I'm excited that the baby is leading, um, you know, to take home some trophies. I want to see him bring it home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait, okay. She blushing. Wait a minute. Right. I love that. <laughs> she said, all right. Oh, okay. So, fun. but what do you guys? What do you guys think um, of the performance list so far? So, you know, Jazz, I saw the baby on there. And Megan our awesome, is also set to perform with him. But some of the other names are Roddy Rich, who I'm excited to see. Nas, Jennifer Hudson. Oh, I can't wait. I'm sorry. I can't wait to see Jennifer Hudson. Alicia Keys, Lil Wayne, and D Smoke. I'm sorry. I love D Smoke as well. I had to put that in there because I don't think he knows. I love you, deep smoke. <laughs> Shoot your shot, baby. Shoot your shot. Wait, wait. Come on, Tom. We're not doing all that now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stir up no the pot. The I'm going to stir it up. Jeez. Nah, I think it's always, uh, I love seeing Alicia Keys perform. You know, um, mm. anytime she performs, she just brings that soulfulness to any award show. So I think it's dope she's going to be on there because I think a lot of people forget all the accomplishments. She was so young, too, mm -hmm. in the game, and she made a lot of history. I mean, Alicia sure. Keith came on the game and literally broke record after record after after record. And, That's you know, cool. the New Orleans connection 
you know, Lil Louisiana more. I'm excited to see Lil Wayne because I really do think he's the greatest mm -hmm. rapper alive. For sure. For I sure. don't know about y'all, but I already know DaBaby and Meg Thee Stallion are about to turn this award show up. Let me tell you. They have some of the best collabs. I don't know why, but they just go together so mm -hmm. well in my mind that, like, I mm -hmm. hope they do a song or two together. Yeah. And well, they you know what? They go together like cheese and grits, right? You know what? You ain't never lying. That's the one time I'll agree with you, Romeo. No, I'm, I'm, I'm actually more of a chicken and grits type of guy. I knew so Tom was going to say it. Oh, oh, I'm not. You're I, not. I, I, grits, so, no, nah, they don't go together like no cheese and grits. Uh -uh. You don't, you don't even eat sense. hot. You don't even use hot sauce. So you right. really shouldn't. So why are we talking yeah. about food? I'm yeah, and Tom, we won't do that. Did all y'all just come for me hard? <laughs> we won't do that today, Anton. Not today, baby. <laughs> okay, well, listen. Um, I mentioned last week that the BET Awards will have an audience, but everyone in that audience needs to be vaccinated. Well, some new news came over the weekend that a concert promoter in Florida is trying to convince his community to get vaccinated by charging vaccinated guests $18 and charging the unvaccinated guests, get this, a thousand dollars to go to the same show. This is, <laughs> this is crazy to me, I don't get it. But what do y'all think? Is it too far to try to force people to get the vaccine to live a normal <laughs> life again? I'm gonna let y'all go first. I'm vaccinated, so either way, you know I'm cool. Y'all want to ah, try? Yeah, let's not let. I'm sorry. Say that. But, but. If I was unvaccinated, I'd be like, what the heck? But what I read was they're doing this to encourage people to get vaccinated. Not That's to not going to encourage me to get vaccinated. You know what? Don't I? It wasn't my idea. I'm just like, you know. home. That's going to encourage me to stay home because I'm not going to get vaccinated. And I feel like it should be your discretion. Yeah. I feel like the price difference is a little bit discriminatory. That's not really fair to say, okay, well, since you're not vaccinated, you have to sit over here and you have to pay $1,000. I just sit home, and they're going to lose out on a lot of ticket sales. So I don't really mm -hmm. think it's going to work anyway. If you want to, if you want to encourage people, you need to educate people, not be forceful and force them to try to do something. Because I'm not going to pay that. But then how yeah, do we educate people? Because we try to do it on social media, we tried to do it on here, and people still aren't getting vaccinated. So it's like, at what point, like, are people going to start to listen? Well, I, I don't think it's necessarily a matter of. <laughs> not uh, people not being educated i think they're educated but it's their choice and they just don't want to get vaccinated y'all yeah. like, know, you know why i'm laughing all day on the matter but i'm still saying i make a very educated opinion and saying i ain't getting vaccinated exactly hey, i'm exactly. rolling over here do y'all see our group chat mk over there like <laughs> yeah I, I the group <laughs> chat turning up we, uh, it's us all laughing at what she's saying she's not even in here yet <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to say that I feel like, you know, they're trying to encourage us too hard with this vaccine. Like, how can we even believe that this is something good for us? They put some on Krispy Kreme, free Krispy Kreme donuts and all uh, type of stuff. Like, if I if I got to pay a thousand to get into a concert, I'm not going. Like, I'm going to see good clips on, on social media anyway. So. You, know what the pan you know what the pandemic taught me? You can yeah. have a great concert on a live stream, baby. I'm not paying no thousand dollars for nothing. You know, the crazy thing about it is, like, the artist is like some punk rock artist, and I don't even pay a thousand dollars to go see Beyonce, let alone but, see some punk artist. Like, they just they look. It's, I feel like the venue and the artist is the one that's going to be losing out the most in this because yes. of the horrible mm -hmm. promoter. That's just mm -hmm. you know. Trying to, I, I don't personally think that it's just about trying to educate people and trying to get them vaccinated. I think it's about money at the end of the day. And I think if he feels like if he's upcharging, he might get one or two or three or four or five people that'll pay a grand a ticket. And, you know, I'm sure the venue has been hurting for the whole year. So he probably looks at it as a win win. Yeah, man. Unfortunately, I don't want to turn this into the X files, but this is just, uh, this is about business. You mm -hmm. know, this whole COVID situation, you got to let people make. Uh, adult decisions and that's what I feel this is nothing new this is America you know we've been dealing with slavery we've been dealing with things where we've been forced to do things our entire lives and this is just another way of them trying to push a certain crowd a certain way our kind of control but I'm not going to get into all of that okay what we got next 
I know y'all heard when we put that little bow on the conversation. So I'm gonna just end it here. And so we gotta take a quick break while we're all calm. But don't go anywhere because MKXYZ is getting into the mix with us when we come back right here on Fox Soul. Welcome back to the mix, you guys. So our guest tonight is a talented singer, songwriter, and dancer who is definitely a star on the rise. She made waves last year with her debut single with G-Eazy, Pass It, and she's keeping the movement going with her new single, One Time, from her brand new EP, Sweet Spot. Let's welcome MKXYZ to the mix. Hey. 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 Was good how you doing yeah, i'm great it's been a busy day but um i was super excited for this like i'm stupid yeah. we are excited <laughs> to have you here now we peeped that you recently celebrated your 23rd birthday so happy belated birthday first off thank you, thank you. <laughs> <Good> job, <man. laughs> hey. now we are really big here in the mix on signs and we heard that you're a tourist so <laughs> How would you describe your energy? My energy, I definitely say that I'm a true Taurus. Like, and if y'all know what that means, y'all know what that means. I could be stubborn, I could be in my way, but at the end of the day, like, I'm very grounded, always have a foot on the ground, super dominant, super beady. You know, I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep it right there. Y'all know what that be. <laughs> it's major, it is major, but definitely all of that. Like, I'm coming with the sauce. <laughs> Taurus don't play, okay? Taurus is very, it's right next to Aries. Y'all don't play. Y'all don't pops, play. You know, my pops are Taurus. Mine too, Romeo. Yeah. Yeah, y'all Taurus, y'all don't play. It all came from that. An uh, empire, look, a whole empire. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <Period. laughs> yes, I love it. Okay, so I love your name, uh, MKXYZ. Not only because it just sounds like dope, but there's also a dope meaning behind it. So for the people who aren't familiar, what does XYZ stand for? And why was it so important for you to go by that name? Yeah, definitely. So MK is short for Michaela, which is my government. Um, but the XYZ is the unknown variable. It's the part of myself that I couldn't define. Um, but it's also an extension, like a family for people who don't want to be boxed in, who don't want to be labeled, who really just want to be who they are and dictate who they are um, unapologetically. Like, it's like we out here, no expectations, just being who we decide to be inside and out. Definitely. I love that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, so MK, one thing that you and I have in common is that we both love to go live on Instagram, but you've taken it to another level and started your own series on IG Live called Shoot Your Shots. Let me get on there. And I saw that you even had <laughs> Kiki Palmer. I saw you even had Kiki Palmer join in on the fun. So can you just tell us what this is and how it all came about? Yeah, for sure. So basically, <laughs> I just feel like there's so many people that just be in my DMs back and forth. Like they just be like, you know, I'll leave my wife and my kids or I'll leave my baby daddy because he ain't really doing much. And I just Ooh. be like, y'all got so much to say. Like it's really capped to me until you say it to my face. Like the receipts yeah, is yeah. in the pudding. So what's up? So then I was I was saying this on live and I was like, you know what? Forget it. Like I'm finna just randomly click y'all, y'all request, and then shoot your shot. Oh <laughs> I know I, I like this. Basketball, I can't play sports, but shoot your shot anyway. So <laughs> people like people were just coming on and it was <laughs> Literally, it's just been a whole, like, it's just a moment. Like, people just don't know what to do. They freeze up. They get nervous. They're like, I, uh, yeah, you was talking all that, but now you got the pants and you ain't saying nothing. So what is it? I was going to say, you you give me the energy of, like, it's hard to shoot your shot at you. Like, I feel like you know what corniness is. You know when somebody ain't got that right energy. So, like, did anybody actually shoot their shot at you? And you was like, okay, I can rock with you. Absolutely. Like people, mm, they be saying some real stuff, but at the end of the day, like I make it very clear, like this is entertainment purposes only. Like you can, mm -hmm. can even when I'm off alive, you can keep on shooting, but that was your chance, the one and only, and that's it. But I though, honestly though, like I show love to everybody that gets on there because it's just, like I said, it's for fun. Um, but some people, they, they like, I did it. Like I, sh like I'm about to get your flight. Like, what are you doing? Like, are you uh, oh, low? Hey, I smell a new MTV show hosted okay. by me and MK. 
Let me call up that mother. Ah, shoot your shot with MK. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love how Romeo, I love how Romeo puts these ideas together and leaves us out, co-hosts. Everybody, <laughs> anybody <laughs> caught that? Yeah. Oh, anybody wait. caught that? Oh wait, I don't, I don't like that. You, Jazz already got the baby, okay? Zo, you already oh. good. You know, I'm just saying, Ty don't want to be no talk show host about no dating show, and Jamie too young. I'm trying all to be right. on the show. Right. Right. I absolutely want to be a talk show host. On right, day. I think that's we all I'm want saying. the bag. Right, right. why can't we all get the bag as a unit? Okay, you know, that's what we'll do. Talk to MK, she the manager. You know, we will. <laughs> but I want to ask first, before we figure out all the business stuff, what was the most memorable shot someone has taken at you so far? Mm. Okay, okay, okay. For sure. Okay. <laughs> because oh, I'm, no, I'm, scared. About, I'm just thinking about how it felt. Like, you know what? I wasn't mad at this, but so my man's. Because <laughs> so I just got to make it clear, too. Like, there's no limitations to who decides to get on the shoot show shot. It's a free for all. Like, do your thing. And that thing was thinging. So let me tell you. So this guy. <laughs> Oh, so this guy from South Africa, like he got on, of course, like I said, this is all random. Click this guy, I couldn't see it first, but then he's like, MK, I love you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he, you know, his action is strong, whatever. He's like, you know, I got the lion in the back for you. Like, you know what I mean? He's like, you need to come to Africa. Like you need to, like, you need to know. I was like, okay, like, so what you working with? And I was like, first of all, let's skip all that. Can you twerk? can you twerk? Cause this is a part of the, like, this is a part of the shot. And he's like, oh, I can twerk for you. Like, I, you know, I twerk. So then I was like, all right, then like, we want to see what's up. So he literally pulls his pants down. Like I'm talking cakes, like cakes. And I was like, you know what? You didn't even have to shoot your shot. Like all you had to do <laughs> start throwing it. Like, honestly, you um, got naked knees, you got everything. You working with a lot. Yo, but he was just he, yeah, he wanted me to come through. I'm like, you booked the flight. Uh, Period. Say less. <laughs> well, listen, well, all that being said, are you single? You know what I'm saying? Are you like and what do you look for if you are single? Nobody wants to know if I'm single. <laughs> oh. You know who's in a relationship with me? Me and music. Oh, oh. Uh, I mean, love that. Like, honestly, like I listen, it's a whole vibe. Me and music, like it's the whole thing. Like we've been rocking for a long time, but <laughs> confidence. <laughs> you know, like to me, confidence is a big thing. Like you have to be, you have to be ambitious. You have to um, know your self worth because I feel like what I've been witnessing. I'm not gonna hold you that like that tag on OnlyFans, like. It's, it's a whole different vibe out here like some people they be doing some other stuff and they just be like well I mean I just because you know I did it but for me it's like self-worth you know and it's really not about having validation from other people in anything in your creativity and who you decide to be it's like literally like I just I do my own like I'm low-key I don't I, like personally I don't like people that's all over the place like I just you know have you ever been into like I, I don't know if you guys like Ever have those moments but whenever you see somebody out and they just like walk in in a flyest outfit and they so ducked off and they so low key and you'd be like but who's that though because you don't you didn't come with no friends you didn't like none of that like i love that like you just in your own zone in your own bag like doing your own thing you know you really true to you and that's uh the thing i really i like about you because you're not forcing anything or forcing it on other people you like just be you you know and that's what a lot of these uh these kids need. They need a role model like that. Somebody, you said the key word, unapologetically me. And that's what I love to see. People who's not doing something for uh certain reasons or to be cool or for clout, but being you to be you. So I take my hat off to you, for real. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, let's get into your music then, since you said that's your bae. So first off, congratulations <laughs> on your uh, first EP, Sweet Spot. It's very dope. Thank and you. I love how it um, reflects both your feminine and your masculine side of your personality. So I wanted to know, how would you describe your sound and the vibes of your EP? 
Yeah, so definitely um, I released a record called Pass It uh, before the EP dropped during COVID. And I felt like while we're stuck in quarantine, while they don't like, while the people don't really get to see who I am and get to know like, okay, MKXYZ, like from the name to who she, like what she looks like to what we're hearing. Like I wanted everybody to see a full picture and hear a full like, like multi-angle view on who I am and what does that sound like? What does that look like when you're looking at visuals, music videos, whatever the case is, everything X, Y, Z, I want you to see all the different sides of me, all the different personas or how it comes together of X, Y, Z, MK, X, Y, Z. So I feel like when I put out Sweet Spot, um, each record in general just gives you the BDE, but it also gives you like, I, mommy, like it's all those different uh, parts of me that I feel like sonically it just makes sense you know like of course you, you get to see my masculine side you get to see my feminine side but it's all about the duality in my voice and my looks and what i decide to deliver and it hits you right in the sweet spot so that's why i named it that too okay mm. mk wow. i gotta get on you because i'm just saying before the little whole break situation i was talking about cheese grits and you're gonna come in here talking about it's about the sugar grits i thought we had a great connection because i don't even think you know this one of my friends actually um, was producing one of your videos and reached out to me to, to be the lead. There's like, yo, this new artist coming out. And this was a while ago. And she reached out to me. She was like, would you be down? So I've been up on you for a long time now. And I remember searching and Googling you and sending you to all of my friends. And like, I'm like, this is the next big artist. So while we were on lockdown, I was actually bumping MK. And it's, I, like, I know like you're an amazing artist. Like, you may be new to people, but you are definitely about to take the game by storm. And I was supposed to be your leading man in a video. I don't even know if you knew that, MK. We connected. But the whole sugar and grits may have just, you know, messed that whole thing it's up. For me. <laughs> my taste. You know, I got, hey, look, I'll still eat the cheese and grits. My <laughs> That's all we good then. <laughs> great example. I would still eat the cheese and grits, but I'm sugar and grits all the way. All I feel the way. You. Okay, Anton, you finally got somebody sugar grits with you, man. Right. That that just means that we got a real connection. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Don't don't hate on that. Don't hate on that, right now, You know. But look, MK, I gotta tell you, sweet spot. You know, um, you don't have no features on there, and I love when artists do this because I think it allowed for the listener to get to know you. Was that intentional? Yes, very much so. Um, I definitely have. Mm. Cause I want be wanting to slip, you know, I don't want to be shy with it, but at the end of the day, it's coming. I will say that it's coming. There is definitely some features that, you know, I keep in the closet, but, <laughs> but at the end of the day, I feel like, yes, as a, as an upcoming artist, I just really want people to see me. And like, it goes back to what I was saying to jazz. Like at the end of the day, I feel like my introduction to people, I really want that connection to be established like okay like oh she can go here and she can go and, oh she said what she say like, you know what I mean and it's all about MK and then of course later I can introduce those moments and people be like oh no she ain't dead yes I did yes I did <laughs> you know? yeah that was very much intentional I, like I like establishing me and and showing up as me first where you, know? you got all this swag that's what I want to know right? when I clicked <laughs> on you last yeah. year I'm like where the I swag came from the swagger what <laughs> I'm just, she was, she was born with that part. <laughs> no, like honestly, I'll probably get it for my mama. <laughs> um, no, I just like I like I feel I feel like it's been a long time coming. Like I've I've faced a lot of different things. I've experienced a lot of different things, also still being so young that it just kind of makes you go like, look when you address people, when you're addressing yourself, whatever, whatever it is, be intentional. Be confident when you say it because at the end of the day, like it's you, like nobody else gets to make these decisions. See, but you them. learned that early, MK. A lot of people, it's easier said than done because a lot of people mm -hmm. want that confidence in that voice. And I feel you're going to give a lot of people that voice and that confidence, though. Thanks. Okay. Can I go back, though? Because I don't want us to sleep on your features because your single pass it featured g Easy, and that it was a whole, it was a whole vibe. Let's just say that. <laughs> and you. you've also been teasing us with the hot single you got with the ba with Lil Baby. I'm sorry. So when can we expect to hear that? Because you know we waiting. 
So, so like I said, oh my gosh, because there's so many people, like there's so many people, you'd be like, oh my God, like for real, for real. And I'd be like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to be a lot of heat, uh, of course, during the summer and the upcoming year. So you're going to mm-hmm. see a lot of those start popping up and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But um, I know a lot of people have been waiting. A lot of people have been waiting. They're like, oh, my gosh, I just want to know when's it coming. I'm like, hold up, mama, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a second. Give me a little second. Go that Taurus. Okay. Yeah, I was- I was just going to say, y'all, I've always felt like Taurus is the closest thing to the Pisces. And I just feel like you could really be my best friend. But we could talk about we could talk about that. Yeah, I, I was going to say, like, why is nobody talking about cancers? Because, like, cancer gang is where it's at. So I'm just confused. But I'm, I'm like, confused. why nobody talking about Leo's? Huh. Here we go. Here we go, y'all. This was this, no, was, me, this was this was me and MK's moment. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, y'all didn't well, have to put y'all. Was, yeah, you know, you always try to fill somebody's front. Let her let her live. Let her live. If you want to shoot your yeah. shot, if you want to. <laughs> well, every day up today is June first, which means it's day one of Pride Month. Now you've been true to yourself since the jump. And, and talk about your sexuality very openly. So I want to know, what does pride mean to you? Um, well, happy pride, first of all. Um, but definitely, I feel like pride for me is every day. You know, I don't feel like you just, it's like Black History Month. You know what I mean? Like, or um, like just in general, like, I feel like it's an everyday thing. I feel like it's not, like, for me, it's just ongoing. It's, it's my life, you know, it's, this is the life I live. But at the end of the day, I feel like I like the fact that there is awareness and attention and unity that, you know, as a collective, we get to experience. Um, And I just feel like that freedom, that X, Y, Z, everybody who is figuring that part out of themselves. It's just that time to be together and to celebrate. It's really a big celebration. It's a chance for you to have fun um, and really be aligned with yourself and what that means to you. So for me, I'm like, turn up every day, like X, Y, Z, probably about to rename the whole thing, but. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. I love that. Okay. Well, y'all, we got to take a little break, but listen, don't go anywhere because MK is going to stay in the mix with us. We're going to get into some hot, some juicy, some nasty little topics. And I'm telling you right now, we're talking about exes. That's why it might get a little nasty. Okay. So when we come back, listen, don't. Want to miss the T because we got Aries, we got Taurus, we got Leo, we got we got Gemini, we got everything in here. It's gonna be wild. So y'all keep it here, right? Lock on Fox Soul, baby. Yeah, yeah. Well, since it's on me, we back with rising (laughs) RB superstar MK in the building. But uh, you know, we want you to get in the midst with us. Are you down to get into this freaky, nasty stuff that Tan talking about? I don't know what right. he's talking about. Say freaky. Nah, nah, don't, don't, don't put that on my spirit. <laughs> 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 say what your head is that, bro? All right. <laughs> but look, Jazz, can you just get it started so MK could, could yeah. join the midst with us and get it popping? Yeah, let's do it. So let's get right into it. So unless you've been living under a rock, you know that J-Lo and A-Rod have called it quits because she caught him putting on concealer. No, I'm kidding. Well, now (laughs) (laughs) J-Lo, I'm kidding. (laughs) Well, now J-Lo has been spotted (laughs) many times with her longtime ex, Ben Affleck, and even grabbed coffee with her ex-husband, Mark Anthony. More recently, did he even enter the convo when he posted a throwback photo of him and J-Lo? And then the two exes were seen on Instagram Live together, dancing and cutting up. So it definitely seems like J-Lo is doing the tour of the exes. But I want to ask you all, would you ever or have you ever gone back to an ex? And MK, since you are our guest, we got to put the, we gotta put you in the hot seat right now. <laughs> all right. So mm-hmm. look. Mm. I'm transparent. I'm transparent. <laughs> Give it no me. cap. I have never been back to an ex. Never no. going back to an ex. Ever. I promise you. I promise you. Never. It's like, look, we like you put all your energy and all your time into making something work the first time. You got one mm. time. I feel like if you have to keep forcing something, what are we doing? Mm. MK. Can MK come host with us every night? I heard you. Right. I like that. I've been here. That's just me, though. <laughs> hey, forget yeah, being a guest. Know. MK need to be a host. Right. At this point, right. where were you I, in the auditions, MK? 
<laughs> Unfortunately, I had a very bad habit of going back to an ex, like oh, really no. bad. Like every time me and some my, my new person get into it, I ran back to an ex. And I noticed mm. after a while, it was just for comfortability. It wasn't because I actually thought we were going to get any better, but it was because I was like, this is my comfort zone. So I had to mature and be like, look, you're going to go through things with your new partner that, you know, may be a little uneasy for you, but just work through it. So now I've gotten out of the habit of going back to an ex, but I had a really bad habit of that. So, mm. um, Jess, I had a habit very close to that. I've been thinking this whole time it was my ex, but it wasn't my ex. It was just people of my past for a long time. Well, up until Izzy, um, who I date now, I've always dated people in my past. I had to go to school with you or you've just been around me. I liked you forever. It was just like, I never met somebody new and started a new fresh like type of relationship. And I always feel like, cause, or I still feel like I'm not good with meeting new people. But um, Izzy has showed me that I think fresh relationships are way better than like dating people in your past. I would agree. But that's my take. How many of y'all like reading books? So once you read a book, you read it again? I do. Um, I don't hold you. I do. That's a good analogy. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I've tried. Anton, yeah, Anton I've reads tried. it a few times, you know. He said, <laughs> he said, yeah, yeah, I do it. I do it. No. I tried that before, and I just could not get through it again twice. Yeah, and I, I yeah. say that because it's, look, it's whatever you, it's, everybody's different. You know, at the end of the day, everybody loved differently. Everybody learned differently. And my thing is what I learned with going back to the past is the past for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. So you just going back to just have some fun or just because you're comfortable, but it's not going to really work out if that's a past situation. Me, I'm cordial, you know, with my exes like Drake. Wait, what, what was that Drake line? All my te exes in Texas? I don't know. Even Texas, yep. But what my thing is, it's about just that peace for me and just knowing what it is. Like I love what MK said, being transparent. If you're transparent, I feel you won't get in that trap of your exes going so back. So do you guys, I, I, I love that reading a book analogy, Romeo, but I have a question. Do you guys believe in, you know how they say uh, right girl or right guy, wrong time? Do you guys believe in that? Because I believe, I used to believe in that too. Like sometimes maybe you just meet them at a wrong time, but now you've matured. So you want to try again, or is it like- mm, I, don't, yeah, I don't think I, that saying goes with people that you have dated. I think that's more so like someone that you haven't tried to make a relationship work and it didn't work out. I think it's for someone who you happen to meet, but you you didn't go there. You didn't cross that line. That's Tom, I'm, let, I'm the love doctor on the show, okay? Let me just tell you, J-Lo was on the show right now. J-Lo would not agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> not J-Lo would not agree with you. Well, listen, guys, speaking of exes, Future is featured on 42 Doug's new song, Maybach. And everybody is talking about his lyrics that come for Lori Harvey and Michael B. Jordan. In the song, mm. Future says things like, tell Steve Harvey, I don't want her and must have forgotten to tell her daddy she begged me not to leave. She didn't have a choice but to bleep a lame after me. Not future calling Michael B. Jordan a lame. <laughs> but right, it's, it's think about people airing their breakup tea publicly. And you know, I'm not just talking about celebrities but because plenty of people go to social mm -hmm. media to diss an ex or to try to make themselves look better after a breakup. So what y'all think about this? I'm listening. I want to hear what y'all got to say. I'll go first. I'll go first. <laughs> it's me. Happy, excited. Okay, this is how I feel. I'm not really with Aaron, my um, ex or whoever I'm with, like out on the internet. I don't think there's a reason. I feel like whatever happened in our relationship is private. You know, the bad times, everything. Like, I don't have to tell, I don't even have to tell everybody we broke up. Like, because now I look thirsty. But <laughs> what I do feel like is, I feel like Future is like the king of that. I feel like Future is the only person who can do that. Um, I don't know, hear me out. You know what I'm saying? Like we kind of love Future for things like this. Like, you know, he's always blatant about everything that happens with him and we love that. But you know, y'all remember Chris Brown tried it and he yelled at Karushi name and we was all a little confused. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Like, I, I think, <laughs> yeah, I think Future, that's, you know, his thing. But for everybody else, it's a no for me. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. MK, what you got to say? Because I know you just say, yeah. the tea is piping hot, and I personally feel like, nah, that ain't it. That's <laughs> not it. Because I just feel like 
if you mm, if you got to say something like and I feel like, OK, it's one thing for entertainment, but in general, like think about everybody. It's like you heard. Yeah. Yes, definitely I'm, getting hurt. I, I, was gonna, I was like, I've definitely been on a point where I've been so hurt. I put like a little quote, like not sneak dissing, but just kind of like letting people know like I'm hurt and like I'm mad up on my Instagram. But then I take it down because I feel like stupid and thirsty, like Zoe said. But like, I know everyone had that moment where they found like that Instagram post. They're like, I need to put this out there. I have. I just have to get out of the, the, the habit of that because like, as you guys know, I, I came out on the show. So like now me and my girl are more open. So I feel like mm-hmm. maybe I shouldn't say that. But before I was very like, no one knew who I was dating. So I was posting subs, Twitter. Yeah, fingers, nobody, nobody yeah, cared. No one knew. But now I would. Peace. Yeah, exactly. So, but I've definitely been there, Jamie. I'm petty. I'm the petty queen. So I, you know what? Me too, girl. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's why I love this show though. It's so many different, uh, you know, uh, personalities. It's like gumbo in here and it's, it's no right or wrong. That's the beauty of life. And that's what the myths represent, baby. Everybody perspective. But with that being said, it's a sad time, y'all, because we got to take a break. But we got to thank MKXYZ for getting into the midst with us tonight and make yeah. sure y'all download her EP Sweet Spot. I'm just saying. Go get that thing, sweet spot. Put so a tango on that thing. But it's available now on all platforms. We'll be right back. Thank you for Thank coming. You, MK. MK. Thank you, MK. Uh, Welcome back to the mix. Now it's time to get a little personal up in here because Jamie shared an inspiring art project that she did the other day. And I thought that we should all talk about it. Now she took a blank canvas and wrote all of her insecurities and fears on it. Then she covered it with her favorite color and then brought herself some empowering messages. And y'all, it's the self-love for me. So Mm. Jamie, my love, can you share why you wanted to do this project and why you want to share on your social media platform and why didn't you call us to like join in? Right, okay. First of all, I'm so sorry. I should Y'all should be my first call. That's on me. I, I'm sorry. Y'all know. You know. No, I, y'all know it's all love, though. So we're, we're good. But I was, like, scrolling through TikTok, and I saw this video of a girl doing something, like, similar, where she wrote just, like, something that she was, like, afraid of. And I was like, you know what? I want to take it, like, a step further. Because at that time, I wasn't really feeling the best. And, like, I'm not the type of person to go rant to someone because I'm scared, like, they'll take what I say and like spill it out to someone else or like use it against me. So I found that I was like, oh my gosh, this could be a really nice way for me to feel safe and like get everything I've been bottling up out. And I wasn't even gonna post it on social media. I honestly recorded it just to like show my mom what I was doing cause she wasn't like with me at the time. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, you know what? Like that video inspired me and it helped me a lot. So I was like, maybe I can just reach one person and help them you know, they're going through something as well. And that was kind of the whole idea behind it. You're reaching more than one person, Jamie. All jokes aside, a lot of uh, uh, my brother's friends, like that, that's girls, they'd be like, the girl on your brother's show is so inspiring. The younger, like we never heard a voice like that, that's so mature. So, and they'd be like, you really mature. Like people look up to you. So shout out to you for doing this because you are inspiring a lot of young people out there. But I got to ask you, what were some of those insecurities or fears you wrote on there or you want to keep it to yourself? I mean, there's some ones I feel like everyone can relate to. I feel like body image, especially when it comes to the social media age, Mm -hmm. you feel like you're not valued enough or you're not worthy enough if you don't look a certain way. Or like even just the fear of like being alone and moving on, going to a new school, having to meet all new people. Because like, Zoe, I'm Mm -hmm. not good at meeting new people. I'm very much an introvert in that way. So it's like, for me to go out and be like, I'm gonna be in a place where I know absolutely no one terrifies me completely. And so those are like the big two that I'll share because I feel like everyone can relate to those in some way. But then there was also like, you know, personal ones that I can't really speak on, but I don't know. I think everyone should try it. Even if like, I suck at art. I failed art class in fifth grade. So (laughs) don't even feel like you have to be good at art. Yo, our skills came through it all. The, they looked really you know beautiful. What? I, it's one color and I still messed it up a little bit. Like I didn't realize you're supposed to paint like the sides of the canvas too. So it all looks nice, but it, it's, I tried my best and I feel like it was good. It was solid. It's definitely it was great. Good. Inspirational, true. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay, wait, For so sure. then if you were to do this project, what are some of y'all's insecurities and fears that you would write down? Mm-hmm. 
Hmm. You know, I feel like, honestly, I've always had a lot of insecurities that I can't really think of off the top of my head. But what I can think about are my new insecurities that I've had, like, becoming a mom. I would feel like first, definitely like my mom body. Um, Jamie, you already pretty much um, spoke on this, but I feel like especially ha- after having a baby, your body just changes so much. And, you know, my friends love to go on trips and stuff and take pictures, even like the taking pictures. Like, I mean, I've never took a lot of pictures, but now like it's even worse. Like I have just had to gain my confidence back and just how I look fully. And um, I don't know, like even little weird stuff, like being out with my friends and acting too much like a mom. Like I'm like, am I acting like a mom now? I don't know. It's weird. Like be, becoming a mom is just like a totally different world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful. I'll go. I'll, I'll say for me, like one of my biggest ones when I came on the show was speaking openly about my my sexuality, and I was really fearful that people would kind of put me in a box after knowing it. And I thought to myself, you know, will this hurt my career um, in the in the long run? Because I know for a lot of black men, you know, we don't see many who are open about their sexuality, and we all know the ones in the industry who you're like, I know you know, but he's not being true to himself. So I was very fearful that me speaking out and being true was going to do more harm than good. But the outpour of responses and people, you know, being there for me and telling me how I inspired them just allowed me to know that, you know, I'm helping other people in this way bigger than me. You know, I'm helping another kid who maybe wanted to commit suicide because he wasn't able to be true to who he was. Amen. Yeah. I like that. I would definitely have to agree with you, Anton. That's well, I'll have to agree with Jamie and Aton because my body image with this quarantine, y'all, I was eating all day. I gained about 15 pounds. Your body is crazy though. What are you talking about? No, not when you're an ex college athlete and now you're looking at yourself and you're like, oh my God, I'm 15 pounds overweight. This is not myself. So Mm. these are my insecurities, Anton. Okay. Okay. Hold up. Oh yeah, thank you though. So definitely body image. And then for me too, just the sexuality. But for me, it was more so failing. I'm not going to say parents, but I know some people can say that. But for me, it was more, more so failing my mom because I felt like all of that judgment, they're not just putting on me, they're putting on her as well. And I know she had said something when she talked about it on um, her show on Fox Soul. And she said, I feel like I failed my daughter. And for me, I, I, I was a little confused because I felt like my homosexuality has nothing to do with how you raised me. So for me, it was more so feeling like my insecurities, am I failing my mom? But at the same time, I have to realize me at 24, I have to live my life as well. Um, and I have to fulfill you know, my needs, my wants and things of that nature. But that's definitely a big insecurity for me is you know, letting down the people who have raised me up and caused me to be you know, who I am today. I just made Y'all do a hell of a job on this show, man, of showing that we're all human, you know, mm-hmm. left, right, blue, purple, up, down. It's like, that's why this show is literally the miss. We're all human. So I take my hat off to everybody. And, and this is why I love coming to work every Tuesday, no matter where I'm at. Oh, yeah, I heard that wrong. Wow. <laughs> okay, before we all start, like, crying, um, we have time right. for one topic. And- yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> and trust me, this one's important. So 23-year-old tennis superstar Naomi Osaka announced yesterday that she has withdrawn from the French Open. She explained why in an open letter on her social media. She said that she'll be taking a break from competitions because she struggles with depression and huge waves of anxiety. This happened after last week when Naomi stated she would not be participating in press conferences. Lots of celebrities and athletes have taken to social media to support Naomi, including the queen of tennis, Serena Williams. Now, here's a we need to drag because irrelevant and controversial host Piers Morgan decided he would go to Twitter and attack Naomi, calling her a narcissist and using mental health to silence the media, who he says is just, quote, doing their job. Romeo, Mm. I have to go to you first with this one please. Yeah. Um, how much time do we have? Because this is a topic where I feel is so important and something I'm very passionate about because mm-hmm. I've seen it on that other side. You know, they said we got three minutes. Three minutes not enough, producers. I need a whole <laughs> damn show. Pardon my French. Three minutes. But um, <laughs> I'm going to hit it like this. 
And I love that Michelle Obama quote, what she always say, when they hit low, we go high, right? Is that yeah. it? Yeah, oh, we go yeah. high. Yeah. And that's, that's the mentality we got to have as the future, you know, because even what Pierce is saying and doing, we can't follow that. Because I'm going to take y'all back to what Bishop T.D. Jake said in Bible study last week that I was watching. He said, if we aren't getting along, it means we aren't being told or taught the same truth. Your cultural background determines what you think is good or what is right. So uh, in the Bible, you know, God uses the most bilingual messengers. And when I say bilingual, not literally, but for, for example, Moses, right? Moses was born a slave, but got the education of a king. He was able to, to communicate to both sides. And I feel the problem with media nowadays is that it's not enough bilingual journalists, you know, platforms. We're in a new age of social media where the, the world is made a lot bigger, you know? So we got to be not only smarter, and just have the facts, but we also have to have big hearts and remember that we're all human. My thing is, I tell people, imagine if that was your sister, imagine if that was your niece, imagine if that was your mom, imagine if that was your grandmother, how would you talk to her then? And just because you're a super superstar and super successful or a talented person, it doesn't mean you're not human. So I just want to take my hat off to Naomi and let her know, man, we stand behind you because people don't know this has been going on. I was 11 years old in France, supposed to have one of my biggest tours. Then Aaliyah passed away and I told my dad I can't do it. I was afraid to fly. I didn't want to talk to any more uh, journalists and do any more interviews. I was just shut down. And my dad was like, you know what? We don't need the money, man. Just forget it. You got to follow your heart. I was supposed to make 25 million in four days over in France. And that's a moment because there's not social media in, in my day and age where people didn't even know. Like that could have been a moment where I could have crashed course and I would have never been the same. So people have always took time for their mental health. It's just now everybody could see it and everybody could throw judgment. So uh, shout out to Naomi for really being a hero for our, our next young superstars out there, because we need more yous, people who aren't afraid to stand up and, and speak their truths. And one thing I noticed, everything happens for a reason. She definitely is a young shining star because she had that butterfly. Did I see that butterfly that kept flying on her? That's a sign right there from God. Oh, I do love butterflies. You said that so perfectly, um, right. Romeo. Wait, can I say one like, more thing? Please, because I don't know how to come after that. And, I, and, I, and I'm pretty sure God didn't create earth just for us to pay taxes and do a job. So it's mm. very important to find that balance and peace. And that's what I want young, young people out there to realize. Find that peace and that balance. Mm. Yes. Yeah, I feel like it was very insensitive for him to say that they're doing their job because you know, this is her life. Like, you know, people are still humans. And I think that a lot of people just forget that. Yeah. But everyone. Well, um, on that note, we have to take a quick, a quick break, but we will be right back here on Fox Soul. That's right. Yeah. Keep it locked. Welcome back to the mix on Fox Soul, you guys. Well, that's our show for tonight. We are out of time. How do you guys feel about the show? I love it. was fun. Yeah. I have to MK. Okay, yeah. I, I just met a new guys, friend. Okay, is the truth. We love her. Well, you know, thank you guys for watching tonight and stay tuned for the Tammy Mac Late Show up next. But first, take a look at the latest Fox Soul deals. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>